Hello and welcome to today's devotion. It's been a while. Uh, took a day or two off uh, after Easter to rest and recuperate a bit, a little bit of a Sabbath rest, but here we are back again. And uh, we're taking a look at Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, a church in Ephesus. We are going to be looking today at chapter 2, verses 11. We'll see how far we go down. Um, and we're going to be talking about knowing God and uh, knowing about God and so forth. So um, that's what we're looking at today. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 11. We'll see how far we go um, in that chapter. But before we get into this chapter and these verses, I invite you to please pray with me. Lord, thank you for your goodness and for your kindness, for your, for your love. Your love that um, is beyond what we're able to imagine. And yet is working through all things, as David says in the Psalms, surely goodness and mercy will pursue me or follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord, in your presence forever. So as we go into your word today, Lord, may we grow, not only in our understanding, but in our realization of your love. And this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Verse 11, Paul writes, So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, Pardon me. It is allergy season. Let me try verse 11 again. So then remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh. Gentiles, by the way, is anybody who was not Jewish. All right. It's a broad term. And it didn't matter if you were German or a Roman citizen or Arab or whoever it may be. If you were not Jewish and you did not worship the God of Abraham, you were considered Gentile or pagan. So Paul says, remember at one time you were pagans or Gentiles, non-Jews, in the flesh, meaning that you were not circumcised. Circumcision was a physical ritual that was performed to mark, if you will, or to signify that one was Jewish that you were Gentiles in the flesh called, quote, the uncircumcised by those called, quote, the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. In other words, at one time, all the Gentiles were not in any way in relationship with God. They were running after their pagan gods who were by nature not gods. They were manifestations of, of man's creation, if you will, of what the gods may be. But they were not gods. And so they were considered and called the uncircumcised primarily because those who were believers in Abraham's God were instructed to be circumcised. A, a circumcision began with Abraham. Paul goes on to say in verse 12, at that time you were without Christ, excluded from citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. He is referring to those current believers that lived in Ephesus, believers in Jesus as God's son, as the Messiah, as the one who the God of Abraham and the God of Israel sent to redeem the world. Paul continues with verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility, meaning that now there is no longer Jew or Gentile, but those people who believe in what the God of Israel is doing through Christ are one, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of the old um, ritual of circumcision. We are one in the realization of what God is doing and placing our faith in Jesus. 
And thereby, it's breaking down the hostility that had existed between Gentiles, anyone who wasn't a Jew, and Jews. Because they both now are in relationship to the God of Abraham, regardless of ethnicity. Verse, fif verse 15, he, God, made no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations so that he might create in himself one new man from the two, resulting in peace. The old covenant has been fulfilled and a new covenant has arose. Uh, you know what, let's just, well, let me go take one more verse. He did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away, meaning Gentiles, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. This is ultimately relationship. Now, I want to focus on something that is, um, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to wrap our minds around. Um, but it's important at least to address whether, whether you'll understand it, whether you can relate to it right away or not. It still needs to be put out there as a truth that we all eventually, hopefully, will experience. And that is this. There is a difference between knowing God. And knowing in a biblical sense means shared experience, intimacy, to actually be able to know in a intimate, relational, personal, deeply personal matter. That knowing, there is a difference between that knowing of God and knowing about God. And the, the, what's taking place within Ephesians is Paul is bringing together in a manner of, of not necessarily argument, but of discourse, two groups. That one group had the history of knowing about God and as such had at least the availability to know God. And another group who never knew God for they were pagans or didn't know about God, but now through Christ have access or the availability to know God. And there is a qualitative difference a substantial difference, I would say an existential difference between knowing God and knowing about God. And as such, I will say this, there is a difference between wanting to know God or the desire to know God and wanting to be right about knowing God. The desire to be right about knowing God. See, when one knows God, one realizes they don't have to defend God. God is perfectly aware or capable of defending himself. When one knows God, they do not feel responsible for convincing or for defending or for trying to, um, I don't want to say strong arm, that's not the right word, but maneuver people into a right positioning about God. Because they know, they experience the anointing of them knowing God will naturally bring that about. And when there's the need, when there is the wanting or desire to be right about knowing God, that's when you have people that can be offended if 
if people may disagree, they can be very much not only offended, but threatened by people that even may have bad doctrine. But the knowing of God brings peace and a sense of assurance and confidence, and as such, the, the ability to love and to understand and to be humble and to speak boldly, not arrogantly, but with confidence. And so when Paul is talking about the two groups coming to one, it's not only about being right about God or needing to be right about knowing God. It's about knowing God. And there is a big difference, big difference. It's a difference that you cannot objectively quantify because it's a living being experience. It's not something that you can measure. It's something that you just simply know. And so my friends in Christ, as we go through the scriptures, may the living God who knows you lead you and open your hearts and minds to know him in all of his goodness. Thank you for checking in today. I hope that the devotion was meaningful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.